right, so we've got about 12 hours left. Um, let's see, we've got to do a clear coat before we can do the wash, which of course means, guess what it means is happening outside when you have to do a lot of spray painting. That's right, it's pouring rain. It's nighttime and pouring rain. So, uh, got a little makeshift shelter here that hopefully won't collapse on my sculpture. That is drying. Let's work on armor. Okay, because I have 12 hours left, I am going to only do my uh, this technique where I'm adding the lichen and, and weathering on the front pieces, and then after the art show, I'll go back in and if I if it needs it, I'll do it on other pieces the back. Whew. See the difference here? This is a uh, lemon yellow and this is uh, more like primary yellow, but that's how I ended up with this nice effect. So I don't want to use the other kind and risk it not getting the effect that I want. Okay, uh, first piece to reestablish my technique is a back piece, even though I said I was only going to do the front. Well, I'm not going to do the front first, no matter what. That would be foolish. Okay, variety of brushes. Do, do, do. Got good stippling brushes, smoothing brushes, detail brushes. Should be good to go. So, the stuff I really like is this area where it's got some green and white mixed together. This area where it's just yellow that's been drawn out. And yeah. So I did, the, I did a satin clear coat over this first. And the reason for that is so that I'll just show you an example. I go in with my yellow, say. I, I want to do some of this kind of drippy, stainy stuff. And so, start a bit here. And I want it to drip around this corner, stain into that crack, and go down there, right? But I don't want those actual brush strokes, so I'm going to go in with a different brush and feather that all out so that it's mostly dissipated. Now, if I had not done the clear coat I, um, while I was brushing, it, it could be reactivating the paint underneath and then mixing that gray and pulling it off. So I would be losing some of the detail that I went through the effort of putting on the, uh, in the color coat layer. So that is why you clear coat between your base colors and then the effects that you put on top and washes and stuff like that. This is, this is a kind of a wash, I suppose you can, you could consider it because it's, um, I'm happy for it to go into the cracks and stuff. Uh, let's get our reference out again. This stuff. So that's, you see how it drips down in rivulets, it gets into the cracks. All of this stuff is basically lichen or lichen if you live in selected parts of the UK. Um, did you know that lichen is a symbiotic creature it is like um, a bacteria or 
some other kind of life form, I can't remember, but it basically, it lives symbiotically with uh, little fungal strands. And uh, that's what gives it its unique shapes. That's working pretty well for me. Now let's uh, double check that I still know how to do the, uh, the green and white lichen. Got some green. Got some white. Am I talking fast? I think I'm talking fast. I'm like super hyped up. If you watch the show Face Off, this is like a hellish, super extended final final looks. You know, that part where they're theoretically finished with the, uh, the sculpting, the design phase, the sculpting phase, the application phase, and last looks is where they're supposed to go in and just do the little touch-ups. But actually what almost always ends up happening is they're doing like application and painting and costuming and all this other like stuff that was supposed to be done before then. So, and they're all like in a huge tizzy. Everyone's running back and forth like there's chaos, there's dramatic fast paced music. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at right now. So if I sound a little crazy, it's because I'm feeling it. Mm, this is not, not quite what I'm going for yet. Maybe needs a little more white. Yeah, that helps. What's particularly good is when your brush picks up some white and some green. And so as, as you're applying it, it's doing both colors simultaneously. Just a just a good time saver, and it also disperses the pigments more randomly than if you were purposefully going in and like touching every individual spot. And when it comes to recreating natural forms, that's that's usually a good thing is to have some chaos in your system so that <clears throat> you get happy accidents. And ideally, your system can. Um, accommodate when you get sad accidents, you have ways to, to cover those parts. So say I don't like that area at all, which, which I don't, because it's clear coated, I can just pretty much wipe it off and it's like it was hardly ever there. And it's not taking off that bottom coat of paint. You know, this might actually be fast enough that I can just do it all at this stage. We'll see, there's, can't remember, 30 something pieces of armor. And so I'm trying to do the math. If each piece takes approximately, you know, like an average of five minutes, can I pound these all out uh, within enough time to get everything done on my list? So on the armor, I'm right now on the lichen uh, front and barred. Oh, back. Why would I? Why would I specify front and back? Maybe, maybe I was just making a note to myself that I could not do the back until later if need be. Yeah, I think that's fine. I don't want to do it everywhere over everything because that's not how lichen works. Again, let's look at some reference here. So, on this castle, there's like, which, which way does that go? Oh, I think it goes this way. This is a weird circular window thing. But like, here's yellowy orange lichen in this area, but then you look up here and there's hardly any, right? There's big areas without. And so it's important to have areas of activity and areas of, ru of rest. So up here there's a lot of lichen, over here there's not much at all. 
probably has to do with wind and rain. I'm gonna keep doing some back pieces until I feel like I can really go fast, fast and accurate on the front. That's the important part. So that you can accomplish both when you're at this stage, like supposed to be done. These little uh, nail bits, there are parts where I didn't quite do the sculpting super well, or there's like, see on this one, there's like a, an air bubble from the casting. That's a perfect spot to go in and just add lichen around it in such a way that it detracts the eye or makes it seem like that's just another part of the, the visual noise of the lichen. I'm probably two-thirds done with the armor, but, uh, and I think it's looking good. I got a process going. I was moving and grooving, but then I noticed that I'm down to nine hours left, and I still have to dry brush the bones, do a wash on the body and bones, uh, before I can actually put the armor on. So finishing the armor at this point would be a, uh, there's a word for that, doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to do a dry brush on these bones, which means I'm going to just mix some of this bone color and some of this white. The nice thing about dry brushing is that it, well, dry brushing with acrylics especially, is that um, dries really fast because you're putting on a super thin layer, like to the point where it's almost dry as it goes on. It's almost a dust on your brush. So by the time I'm done with that, I think I'll be able to move on to the body wash. And then when I'm done with the body wash, I can do the bone wash. That is my theory. 
This is crazy. A lot of these steps I've been doing over the past couple days, I, in my mind, I expected them to take like a couple days each. Well, yeah, I suppose they are. I'm just doing them all, like doing a bunch of all-nighters and working on it absolutely all day. You know, like taking three days off work at this point. Fortunately, I'm at a point in my development, like just last week I was crunching on bugs and I could not have taken time off. Well, I mean, technically I could have, but it would have made my team and myself very sad. Um, but yeah, I finished all my important bugs just in time, so pretty much just sitting around waiting for uh, bug regressions and that kind of stuff, so it's really not a big deal for me to be out of the office for a couple days. Alright, so the thing I'm super nervous about right now is the hair. Like, I thought that was going to... Okay, because A, cutting fabric, not something I've done much of. B, cutting fake fur is like a super hard fabric to cut. And uh, C, I've never put fabric over a three-dimensional surface like this. You know, it's kind of like de designing a, a stuffed animal where you got to know where the seams go and stuff. So, knowing that it, how little I know about the process, I expected to probably spend a full week figuring out the fur. And I'm going to have a couple hours if I'm lucky. So, <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. Hopefully I'll be able to do it in such a way where if I do it horribly and it needs to be redone, that will be possible. Exactly. Alright, so you may have noticed that that was not so much a dry brush as it was a recoat. It just needed it because so much of it was black from the spray paint and putting a light color over a dark color usually requires more than one coat. So it's now coated with a lighter ivory. Uh, I think I'm going to do a dry brush with just pure white. That's right, you heard it here folks doing a pure white dry brush. It's madness! Well, you know what? When it's uh, one in the morning and you got eight hours left, it's, it's time to get a little mad. That, that's British mad, not American mad, by the way. I'm not angry at all. I mean, if, if I was angry, I would be angry with myself for poor time management, I suppose. Looks like I'm going to have to wait a bit eh, or flip it over. I guess I'll flip it over. There's this I did this part last, so it's not dry yet. But every time I flip it over, it's you can see it's peeling paint off of the tips of stuff because it's not sealed or totally dry. Uh, but those are those are really easy to touch up. It's just uh, the amount of things to touch up keeps growing and growing. One of the reasons I'm going with the white for a dry brush is uh, the, where the bone is wearing off, you know, from getting uh, moved around and stuff. The, the material I used to sculpt it was white because I was thinking ahead that way. So when it uh, scrapes through it's it's a bone white underneath unfortunately since there's a coat of black you can see there's like a black speck there uh, some of that shows through I think the um, the wash that I'm going to give it 
this seraphim sepia I used it on the on the floor tiles as well uh, I think it's gonna darken this bone pretty considerably so that is uh, one of the reasons that another reason that using the white is fine in this case I'm doing a um, a heavy uh, like it's kind of a dry brush, but I'm just hitting hitting the corners with a lot more paint loaded on my brush, just to emphasize the the peaks. All right, and are there any other touch? Yeah, there's a couple places I need to touch up around the the skin, places where the uh, the bone color seeped down into a crack between the bone and the skin just making an ugly look there okay gonna let some stuff dry a little bit more and do some more armor while i'm waiting Let me tell you, it is super annoying to keep bouncing back and forth between two different parts of this paint job. Keep having to put the brushes and the paint off the table over there and then coming back. Sometimes I forget to wash my brushes and then they're dried out. I do not recommend it. Pro tip number 1,876, don't ever have deadlines. Uh, but the thing is, without deadlines, your stuff just doesn't get done. Well, my stuff doesn't very often. So pro tip number 1,870, uh, whatever the next one is, always set deadlines for yourself. There's probably a healthy balance in there where you can um, both set a deadline and be a rational, a rational, reasonable person when it comes to ascertaining that it was just unrealistic and then don't kill yourself trying to, trying to get it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just it's probably unwise that I'm doing all this work that is um like really important to the final presentation um when I'm not at my best, when I'm exhausted, I'm mentally and physically fatigued. My back is killing me. My limbs are kind of like shaky. I feel nauseous and out of breath and my chest kind of hurts. I think that's not so much from my heart, although maybe it is. And it's just like my, my back is like pulling my ribs all wonky. I don't know. Whatever it is, it, it's not fun. And really I should just be like, oh well, I'll just, I'll just enter it in this art contest next year. That's fine, but um, yeah, so close. I only got what time is it? It's 1:30 a.m. So I got. Let's see. If it was two, I would have six hours. So I have like six and a half hours left. And who knows? I mean, I may actually get it done, and it may look good. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. So, I shall continue to push through. Here's something really cool 
that I have learned about painting miniature lichen from doing it for an hour or so. Uh, basically, the trick is to use a lot of alcohol. Probably helps to drink a lot of alcohol too, but for this, I'm mostly concerned with the alcohol on the surface, the rubbing alcohol. Then you take your paint, blob it on, pat away most of it, and then go in with a ton of alcohol again. You're just blasting this with alcohol. So pretty much what that's doing is breaking the uh, the pigment particles up and so you end up in places where it runs like a pool into these really cool looking splotches like this see how cool and natural that is and I hardly painted that at all I mostly just put on a pool of alcohol couple drops of paint and then just let it disperse naturally so. and also the other thing it does very naturally is gets sucked through capillary action into all the little crevices between the stones and so you get a brighter look in the in the cracks which in a lot of reference that I have which I don't have any good close-up. I will add some through editing to show you what I'm talking about, but um, yeah, I'm really pleased with this effect. I'm glad I stumbled across it. And I'm mixing two different kinds of lichen, well, maybe three technically, this uh, green and white and then the yellow. And um, I'll insert another image that shows how lichen often uh, mixes together in lots of uh, interesting colors and patterns. I did a little bit of research uh, before I started doing this just so I had some kind of understanding besides strictly what I see with my eyes about how and why it grows. And I don't know if that actually like helped me reproduce it at all. I think mostly it came from randomly experimenting with alcohol and acrylic paint, but um, still, it's, it's cool. It's cool to know that kind of stuff. It's cool to know that lichen is a symbiotic life form between bacteria and uh, lichen, or it is lichen, bacteria and fungus. Oh, another thing the alcohol is really great for is when you've got your splotches like this, you can see that it looks, it looks like a paintbrush went in and did that. But you load up a bunch of alcohol onto a, a clean brush and you just start tapping the alcohol there and it, it starts busting up those shapes into a more kind of natural look. This is such a neat effect. I should probably do a tutorial just on doing old ruined rock stuff. It might be helpful for some people. I'm sure lots of people know about this trick, but I haven't come across it yet. So.
Okay, so I think I want to make his beard essentially like a sock that would just slide over. Let's make it the direction the fur actually goes, which looks like it's this way. Or does it just go every way? No, okay, it definitely has a direction. So, something like that. And it would be very wise to put the face on to make sure I'm not doing anything that's gonna be disrupting the face armor. That's just about where it needs to go. Could give it a little more girth. Spread it out this way some. That would mean a longer wire. So, good thing I still got wire. Yeah, that seems good. That way I can pull the beard up into this crevice in here. Now the seam of the beard, of course, I'm gonna want in the back. I wonder if it would be useful to like glue it down first, glue it to the wire, then cut it. Yeah, I think that's a good strategy. I think uh, what I will do is just use my big scissors and cut off a oversized piece just so I'm not futzing around with this giant sheet. And no, this does not look like a rocket ship. You know, for having a ginormous battery on this thing, why does it take five, ten minutes for it to heat up? And this stuff, it looks like you can lay in pretty much any direction. Okay, well, no, that's not true. This still does have a direction, so I'm going to need to be careful when I cut it to make sure that I'm... You know, you don't want one piece going that way and then a piece next to it going that way. Because then you'll definitely see a seam. Hmm. I wonder if I should stuff it. So it's got some girth to it. Probably should. And I can do that with... Aluminum foil would probably be good because then I can scrunch or unscrunch it as needed. Yeah, that's looking great. Okay. Now, the question is, is it as easy as just folding it over and gluing it? We don't want these short hairs from where I cut it. I did not leave myself enough room there. Do I cut another piece? I guess I could just use this as the filling and cut another piece that goes over this. Yeah, that's what I'll do. He has kind of a round, bulbous beard. Doesn't really come to a point like that. Yeah. 
That's pretty darn good. If I do say so myself. And I just did. The only thing I think it's missing is a middle beard wire. I just so happen to have a middle beard wire right here. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to find middle beard wires on eBay. Everyone's got left beard wires and right beard wires, but no middle beard wires. Just basically, I just I want to make sure that it, when I'm posing the beard, it doesn't, you know, if I have it going in a direction, it's not just going to drop down weird. Yeah, it definitely goes below his belt, but I think if he was standing upright like he is in the T-pose in my reference, it would probably be about the, the right length, so. Pretty happy with where it's at. Let's airbrush it now. Alright, so my idea for how I was going to lay this out was going to be to use paper or some other like thinner cloth, lay it out, like make marks and then cut that out and then I'll put that on the fur and then cut the fur out and then place it on and I would totally do that if I had more than negative three hours, but I don't. So. I'm gonna try to slapdash it, and if it doesn't work, hopefully I can just, <clears throat> after the art show, I can just tear it off and redo it. So, here we go. First time for everything. Wonderful when it's at the very last second. All right, uh, so one thing I know is that from studying pictures of animals, is that uh, creatures, animals have that have hair on them part down the middle of their back. So like the hair would be going this way, you know. So basically from the spine, which conveniently is mostly broken up by this by this bony ridge. Um, so that would go in that direction. That would go in that direction, and then. Kind of from the head would go back so it'd go back and blend out but if i can basically make two major pieces one that goes on the whole front you know, on the whole right half one that goes on the whole left half i think i'm most of the way there actually we got a better idea uh, first, I'm going to do the little patches on the back of the arms because that's good practice. And it's not the first thing that people see. So we want it to go that way probably. So let's see what happens when I cut. So vaguely that shaped, or well, at least that sized piece. Okay. Oh, my list. What have I done? Uh, I did the armor. Uh, I have not dull coated it. I may do that later. I didn't do the shinies. I may do that later. I haven't done the attaching the filling <laughs> on the paint. Oh my god. Uh, the skin, aha, okay, I did the highlights, I did the bones, I did the wash. Skin is done, in the bag, okay, hair. Um, pattern and gluing. So, like I said, I'm not doing the pattern. Uh, I'm just 
slap dashing it on. Okay. I kind of kind of wonder if I just glued it down with a drop of hot glue in the middle and then just cut around it with an exacto knife, you know, hold it like this. I'll try that on the next arm. All right, not bad. There's this hair that I tried to you know put there for blending it's got so much gunk attached to it now I don't even know if it's gonna do its job let's see I guess it kind of makes a, a weird darker downy fuzz underneath the main patch I left a little ridge like or a lip you know I dug my tool down under so that I could shove the edge of the fabric under the skin lip so that you wouldn't see any weird fabric things and then I reinforced that by putting this this other fuzz embedded in the fur or embedded in the skin and I think that should do a pretty good job of hiding any seams All right, I am going to try this tool that my barber, Nikki, uh, loaned me. Nicole. I call her Nikki because she was at another place that had a Nicole before her, and so she got called Nikki. Sorry, Nicole. Anyway, uh, she's awesome and super nice, and she looks like Flo from those... Uh, insurance commercials and uh she sh i <laughs> you want to talk about a weird customer i come in one day and i've got some patches of fake fur and i'm like hey nicole can you show me how you would like style this stuff <laughs> and yeah she she showed me how to, she gave me this cool razor thing loaned it to me and uh showed me the, the spraying trick, like she had some, some hairspray like coloring for people with graying hair, like sp sprays at the roots. I used my airbrush for that, but gave me that idea. And so, anyway, for, for this area where it's, it's like long over here and then just kind of hangs over, I kind of want to thin that out. And that's what these are amazing for. It's it's a razor, but it's got a little, um, you know, like like comb teeth on it. So it's not like just taking a razor to it. It it uh, razors it more chunkily, right? That's a word, right? Yeah, it's letting me thin out the edges here and give it a more natural gradation from this big furry patch to less fur. Hmm. Yeah, this, uh, this darker fur underneath is actually working out way better than I, than I thought it was going to a moment ago. It gives a really nice transition. So far this has been a historic event. Let me tell you, the first time you try a new art thing, it it's problem after problem after problem. And so far this hair has been just, it's been a breeze. Like, I seriously thought this was going to take me a week or so to figure out. And I'm doing it all in one session. One very long session, but one session nonetheless. Oh, wow. God, this is a cool... I've got to get one of these.
Let's see what happens when we stick the armor on there now. Assuming I can find the armor. Beautiful! It's it's just what I wanted! How? How is this happening? This never happens. All right, well, I'm gonna try my shortcut idea. See what happens if I just glue down a chunk. Err on the side of leaving too much material. <clears throat> and that way I can, I can trim it back if I need to, as opposed to having a gap, which then I'd have to fill somehow. I'm going to glue down this patch that I'm happy with. Looks like that uh, little skin lip is actually paying off. I'm able to tuck the fur right under there. And it's, and it's seamless. Love it when a plan comes together. It so seldom does. Thank you. 